All right, we're in Unit 5, page 40, Compounds and Molecules. Uh, so what is a compound? A chemical compound is a substance that's composed of two or more different elements. Just as letters form words when they're combined, elements in combination form compounds. You can make different words with different meanings from the same set of letters. For example, you can make different words with the letters. So let's uh, do that real quick. A, E, M, and N. All right, so there's four letters. Really quick, how many words could you make out of that? Let me give you about 10 seconds. All right, so first off, um, since we're talking about names, uh, we can make the word name. We can, some people say that I am mean as a lion that has a mane. Once again, I'm zooming in. Apparently if I double click, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm writing too fast. Main and amen. I think I'm done. Um, I think if I can rearrange these in any other way, I can't think of any other hot pan. But I can make four words out of those four letters in any different form. And of course, you know, these are fun little games to play. Name, mean, main, and amen. Those are the ones I can think of offhand. Just like that, we can take the same elements and recombine them in different ways and get different compounds out of them. Um, compounds are kind of like words. Elements are like letters, if you would. Um, so compounds are made out of, um, it's a group of atoms that are bonded together. Basically what's going on here in each of these situations is um, they're sharing a pair of electrons between them, okay? And there's a pull between the nucleus of this atom and the nucleus of that atom for those electrons. It's like a little tug of war going on. They're like, eh, I want these, well, I want these. And basically they're having to share in order for them to get along. Think of it as like a couple, if you've got a couple of kids and you've got like only one basketball hoop, they have to share the basketball hoop if they want to get along. You know, uh, and plus it's a lot more fun because you've got somebody to play with, but that doesn't really apply for compounds. Uh, carbon dioxide actually has two sets of bonds that it's sharing. Um, so carbon's sharing two of its electrons with oxygen and oxygen's sharing two of its electrons with carbon. Same thing on this side as well. And by doing that, everybody gets that magical number of eight electrons that they're all looking for. Uh, so as long as they can all get eight electrons, everybody's going to be, well, kind of happy. Not exactly, but I um, mean, I use the term happy, but atoms and molecules aren't people. They can't feel emotions like that. I don't think they can. Um, page 41. Um, Properties of compounds. Like elements, different chemical compounds have different physical and chemical properties that depend on the atoms they're made of. Properties of a compound differ from the properties of its elements. For example, water is made of, a ga of two gases, oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen is a clear, colorless, odorless gas that's around us. Hydrogen is a clear, colorless, odorless gas that's around us. And you put the two together, you get a clear liquid that's essential for life. You know, so gas and gas make liquid. I mean, how does that work? You know, table salt's another great example. Table salt is sodium chloride. Sodium is a shiny, silvery metal that is extremely reactive. You put sodium in water, it will blow up on you, especially if you've got a big enough piece. Uh, chlorine is a greenish gas, and it will kill you. Um, it is why you don't mix bleach and ammonia together. Um, because it makes like a mustard gas. It makes a, a chlorine compound that will kill you. Uh, it's not exactly chlorine gas, I don't think. Um, I've seen different variations on what exactly that reaction is. Uh, but um, chlorine, you know, chlorine's a, it's a killer. It literally, honestly, is a literal killer, and that's why we use it to help disinfect stuff, because it kills microbes just like it kills us. Uh, just luckily, it has to have a lot of it to kill us. Um, we're much bigger organisms. Uh, but you put sodium, a silvery metal, together with chlorine, which is a greenish gas, and you get something that's essential for life. I mean, how does that work? You have these little white solid, solid crystals that are, well, they're, they're salty. Um, now, some elements form compounds more easily than others. And I, I do not like this picture. Um, I fuss about this picture, and I fuss about this picture for multiple reasons. Uh, first off, 
this guy would not be happy, uh, would not be sad. He would be happy. He is thrilled to death to be himself uh, because he is so stable. Everybody else wants to be like him. In fact, everybody else, in my opinion, is actually kind of sad. Now it does look like they got mustaches, but they're actually sad. They're, they're not happy. Uh, because they don't look like this guy. Neon has got all his electrons. He's got all eight of them. He's got eight electrons, and that's exactly what he wants to have. The others don't have them. Now, they've got hydrogen with two. Hydrogen don't have two. Cut hydrogen's hand off. Hydrogen wants two. So hydrogen's only got the one. Oxygen's got six. It needs two more. And carbon, he's got um, four. So these are not, it's just not a good picture. Um, it kind of gets its point across that basically you can think of atoms as things with electrons as hands, and they kind of want to hold hands with others. Um, but I don't like the I don't like how they've done this. Um, I kind of understand what they've done here. I guess they're saying this guy is unhappy. That's why nobody wants to bond with him. But it's not because all the others are ultimately trying to get to the same configuration that he's got. Um, and I say he could be a she, but. Um, uh, it, it, it's just I have issues with this drawing for that reason. Uh, but some elements and compounds combine more readily. Elements that combine easily are called reactive. Non-reactive elements are called inert. They do not react. On page 43... Uh, when we put formulas together, we have numbers. The number refers to the element that it follows, and it's always written as a subscript. If it's not written, it's assumed to be a 1. If it was 0, we wouldn't even bother writing the symbol in the first place. So CO2, which everybody's familiar with because you hear it in the news all the time about global warming, carbon dioxide. It's one carbon, two oxygens. Um, the second paragraph here, you need to know it. Water, H2O, has two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. The little number to the right of the H tells how many atoms of the element hydrogen are in one molecule of the compound water. Okay. Now the thing about CO2 is you can also have CO, carbon monoxide. Now this comes from the incomplete combustion of a car. So uh, you see this in movies. I saw this in Equalizer with Denzel Washington. I saw this at the beginning of Hot Tub Time Machine 2 of all god-awful movies. Um, I saw this in uh, the... The, I think the fourth paranormal activity, the one where they had the Xbox and all, um, the girl got the ghost locked her, basically locked her in the garage with the car and she was starting to cough. Uh, you see this in movies sometimes where car exhaust um, gives off this carbon monoxide. I mean, yeah, it gives off other stuff too, soot particles and particulates and such, but um, uh, it, it, it'll kill you. Um, CO will will kill you. So um, sometimes people commit suicide by they lock themselves in a garage, they turn on the car, the car cranks and runs. It just fills up the air with CO. It displaces the oxygen. You, your body, I think it affixes to your hemoglobin more easily than oxygen, and uh, you suffocate basically because you just don't get enough oxygen and you go to sleep and you die. Um, it's a horrible truth, but it is what it is. Um, and I think it's worth mentioning. But uh, CO is incomplete combustion uh, as, as CO2. Okay, CO2 and CO. Um, you see this in both places. Um, they're both made of carbon. They're both made of oxygen, but they're very different compounds. Okay, um, okay we're not going to go there just yet. On page 44, there is an activity, compound names and symbols. I would encourage you to do this. I uh, They give you a list of elements at the bottom of the page. They want you to name the elements that are occurring in each chemical formula. I believe that you can do this. You need to know how to do this for the test. On page 45, they want you to take each of those formulas and tell them where is it found. Hydrochloric acid is found in your stomach acid. Uh, your stomach acid is hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen sulfide is found in rotten eggs. Carbon monoxide comes from automobile exhaust. Carbon dioxide comes from human exhaust. Uh, we breathe it out in respiration. Uh, sodium chloride is table salt. Uh, sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3. It's a very complicated formula. Um, it's baking soda. Sodium bicarbonate is what it is. Um, water is common. I mean, we know what water is. And then hydrogen peroxide is used as an antiseptic. Okay. On page 46, 
I like the list on page 46 a little bit better because it lists a few more chemicals than what were on the previous one. Um, I do want to point out on page 46 that at the bottom, ammonia. Ammonia is NH3. Ammonia is like water. Ammonia and water are the only two compounds that I know that don't go by a prescribed naming system. They just, they, they're given a common name and then they're given symbols. Um, but I do want to point out that y'all's green pages, you need to correct this at the bottom of page 46. It's in your green pages, page 9 of your green pages. Um, it says NH3 is one nitrogen. Your book says three oxygen is three hydrogens. I think it's very obvious what the answers are there, but your green pages are wrong. So I do want to point that out there. Okay? And we're going to stop it right there. Have a great one.